This is a 2011 Mercedes SLS AMG. Now, back when the SLS was new in 2011, the starting price was $185,000, including shipping. Today, the average asking price for a used 2011 SLS AMG on AutoTrader, like this one, is $184,000. Now this surprises me because most used Mercedes models lose value faster than a used mattress. So how has this one stayed so valuable? Now, I know your first reaction is going to be that the SLS has held its value because it's rare or because it's a special sports car, but the truth is there are currently about 130 used SLSs listed for sale on AutoTrader. That's way more than the SLS's predecessor, the SLR, which has lost more than half of its value since it came out 13 years ago. So what gives? I figured by now I'd be able to pick one of these up for 100 grand easy. Why is this thing still so expensive? I don't know. I've driven a lot of cars, but I've never spent any time with an SLS. I've never even sat inside one. So today, this one was loaned to me by the generous exclusive automotive group, Aston Martin and Bentley of Tyson's Corner in the Washington DC area. And I'm gonna show you around it. I'm gonna give you a tour, and then I'm gonna take it out on the road to find out if this thing is really worth $185,000. Of course, for more of my thoughts, click the link below to read my column on autotrader.com oversteer. All right, now the thing that everybody wants to know first and foremost about this car is the doors. So here's how they work. You press the unlock button on the key fob and the door handle pops out so that you can reach down and open them. Now, if for whatever reason the door handles don't pop open, or if you just wanna go up to some random stranger's SLS and try to pull on the door handle, you can open it a different way. Push this button and then the door handle pops out and you can open the door. Okay, so getting in, you figured out how to open the door, and now it's time to climb inside. Believe it or not, despite the fact that these doors open straight up, this car isn't as difficult to get into as some of the weird doored cars that I've been in. You just kind of sit your butt down, pull your leg over, and you're in. It's an easy motion. Next up is closing the door. Now, there's no handle that comes down for easy door closing, and there's no button you push to have the door close automatically. Instead, you gotta reach up and close it. If you're short, you might not have a very easy time closing the door. Now there are two interesting quirks over here in the door situation. Everybody always asks me why the sill is so high in cars that have strange opening doors. That's because of side crash protection. When the car has a door like this, you can't put the crash protection structure in the door. Instead, you have to put it in the door sill. And the result of that is that the door sill becomes wider and higher, which generally makes it harder to get into. Although in this car, I don't really find that to be a problem. But the other problem with those wide sills is that means there's no possibility for any door pocket storage. Instead, the only storage inside the car is between the two seats and a small little pouch on the passenger side footwell. Perhaps more interesting, another unusual quirk, because Mercedes knows that the door sill is so wide and so high and this part is constantly gonna be scraped and scuffed by shoes and feet, this little part here is easily replaceable in case it gets dinged. Now, when you get inside to turn the car on, most of the time you just press the giant red engine start stop button and the thing fires to life, but in case the engine start stop button isn't working for whatever reason, there's an alternative way to start the car, kind of a little Easter egg for SLS owners. It's hidden in the back of the center console in a place you'd never think to look for it. There's a little keyhole for the Mercedes plastic key. Put the key in, turn it, and the car is on, even though you haven't pressed the start stop button. Now, one of the most interesting exterior design details of this car is just how long the hood is. If you've ever seen one of these on the road, you know exactly what I mean. Now, the reason for this is because Mercedes put the engine really far back in the front for weight distribution purposes. Now, a lot of people talk about how some front engine cars are actually mid-engine cars because the bulk of the motor is behind the front wheels. Well, in this case, the entire motor is behind the front wheels. Take a look at this. The front wheels are located here. That's the center of them, as you can tell. The engine starts right here. So the wheels are here and the engine is here. The entire engine is behind the front wheels. Although this car is front engine, it really technically is a mid-engine car. Speaking of the front, another interesting SLS quirk. This is how high the hood opens in a normal automobile. This is how high the hood opens in an SLS. <laughs> One unfortunate drawback is the center control stack, which is surprisingly a mass of rather cheap looking plastic. The worst part, here's a $180,000 car where half the big buttons in the middle that you're always looking at are blank. 
Also inside the car is a rather curious item. The sun visor has holes in it. Look at this, you can see right through it, sort of. I don't know why they did this, but I bet they'd claim it's for weight reduction. Also in the sun visor is the smallest sun visor mirror I've ever seen. Now in back, the trunk of the SLS is actually surprisingly large for an exotic car, but the strange thing about it is it has all these weird contours I can't really explain. Now it's extremely unlikely that you'll get stuck in the trunk of the SLS, considering its size and the size of the opening, but just in case you do, there's a way out. Now, that's federal law. All cars have a little handle that you pull in order to get out of the trunk, but the SLS does it a little bit differently. Instead of a little glow-in-the-dark handle, there's a button in the trunk that it's pulsating at all times. Now, the SLS also has another interesting feature in back. Like many exotic cars, the spoiler goes up at a certain speed to help you with downforce. Or push a button inside and you can be like one of those annoying people who drives around with the spoiler up all the time, hoping people look at you and think you're cool. Oh, and one other thing, the sound is amazing. Okay, so the SLS has some unique touches and some cool quirks, but mostly it's just a straightforward Mercedes, although it is a fast one. It has a 560 horsepower V8, a dual clutch automatic, and it'll do zero to 60 in just 3.6 seconds. But an SL65 AMG from the same era has around 40 more horsepower, and you can get one of those for half the price. So is this thing worth it? To find out, I think a drive is in order. <laughs> Good. Who knew? I thought this car was gonna be like a touring car. Oh my god, it's so precise. One of the things I like, I'm, I'm, I'm too big for this car. I'm six foot three. My head on on the roof itself, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. You know, I can't get my head in there. But the doors, because the doors open the way they do, there's actually a cutout for your head. So I actually have a few extra inches of headroom in this car. Oh my God, that is seriously fast. I always viewed this car when I saw them on the street. I've literally never driven one or been in one ever. I always viewed this car as, I thought it would be like a touring car or like a Mercedes. It feels like a monster. This thing is seriously quick. <laughs> 2011 exotic cars were not all this good. No wonder this thing is still worth so much. It still feels like how you'd want a modern exotic sports car to feel. This car is just as fast and just as good as any modern exotic car I've driven. Woo, and the brakes, wow, that's really impressive. This, oh my God, this is so much fun. The ride quality is not so bad, surprisingly. It's not great, but it's better than a Ferrari. The steering is just so precise. I feel like I can put this car anywhere on the road and feel comfortable with it. One thing I will say, the interior, the center controls and stuff are a little cheap. I mean, the main thing you look at here, it's just sort of this hard plastic. This isn't quite as nice as a modern car in that respect. It may drive as well as a modern car, but even the display screen in the center here, it's very pixelated, it's not multicolor. I mean, there's a few ways you can tell that this car is, is no you know, modern exotic. This would be like Mercedes take on an exotic car. This is really an exotic car. This drives like any Ferrari I've ever heard. <laughs> oh my God. This is incredible and it feels very, very stable. This car reminds me a lot of the AMG GT, which is similarly priced with options. The AMG GT is a little bit cheaper, but it doesn't have the trick doors. It's so funny because I thought the AMG GT got an unfair shake. And now I'm driving this and it feels the same way about this car. Nobody talks about this car. Nobody ever says when people are trying to, oh, should I get a 430? Nobody ever says, oh, get an SLS. But they should. This is so much fun. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe how fast this car is and I can't believe how much it sounds like a real exotic car. This whole time, this whole time, the last six years, I've made the assumption that this was just a touring car that was nowhere near as good as its rivals. The market has proven that I'm clearly an idiot and I should have known this. 
So here's what I've discovered about the SLS. It is tremendously cool with its gullwing doors and its long front hood. It's also wildly fast, even by modern standards. I don't think this car will ever appreciate in value shooting up like a Ford GT or a LaFerrari, but it's too special to go into the $100,000, $150,000 range. This is still an excellent car with amazing performance, a huge surprise, and beautiful styling. I think this car still turns heads and yes, I think it's still worth $185,000, even if it doesn't say Ferrari or Lamborghini on the front. Abs that glow in the dark like you usually see. Instead, it's a button that's pulsating for you to be able to see to get out of the trunk. It's a button that's pulsating. I should have just stopped there. The trunk of the SLS is actually surprisingly large for an exotic car like itself. <laughs> this is a great car. I think I want one.